Hi folks, in this second video we continue our journey of discovery and this time we are focusing on George and Margaret Moffat. At the end of the last video we left the family tree looking like this and we know that James Moffat was born in Carlisle in 1871. The 1871 census was taken on the 2nd of April, so that about six months before he was born. So we can begin looking for George, Margaret and James in Carlisle in the 1881 census. Sadly, there are no entries for George and Margaret Moffat and a nine-year-old James living in Carlisle in 1881. If we go back and search the 1871 census, the results are unclear. They do reveal a Margaret Moffat living in Carlisle, who was married, but there is no entry for her husband. So with James born in October 1871, George and Margaret must have married in 1870 or before, and he may have had older siblings. So we need to go back to the 1861 census to see if we can find a George and Margaret. And sure enough, we discover a George and Margaret Moffat living in Carlisle, aged 19 and 18 respectively, as lodgers in the house of a Thomas McMurray of Home Court, 9 Milburn Street, Colgate. This is possibly who we are looking for, but there are a couple of interesting things we can note from this census entry. The first is George Moffat is recorded as being born in Yorkshire, Reading. However, there is no place called Reading in any part of Yorkshire. Way back in 2017, I did a search of the 1861 census to see if any other people were registered as being born in Reading, Yorkshire. And the search revealed 26 entries. But on further examination, only seven of those were transcribed accurately. The rest were transcription errors. Usually Berkshire had become Yorkshire. However, there was no consistency over names or the places these people now lived in 1861. I did the same search in the 1851 census and I found 13 entries from Reading, Yorkshire, but only three were not transcription errors. So rethinking things, let's think there is the possibility that George Moffat was related to Thomas McMurray. After all, they are both recorded as being born in Yorkshire and both were in the same industry. George was a cotton dyer and Thomas a cotton weaver. As an aside, Colgate, which is where they were living, was the centre of Carlisle's cotton industry. And Milburn Street is very near Shaddon Cotton Mill, where the tallest landmark in Carlisle is found, that's Dixon's Chimney. So, following up on the possibility of George and Thomas coming from the same area, a search of the GRO index reveals a George Moffat was born on the 13th of June 1839 in Skullcoats, north of Hull in Yorkshire, the birthplace of Thomas McMurray according to the census. But this would mean George would be 21 years old in 1861 rather than 19. The census was taken on the 7th of April. But age discrepancies are quite common in the censuses and are not in themselves a reason to reject an identification such as this. So, the parents of this George Moffat were William, a brickmaker, and Sarah Caster. A search of the GRO index reveals that a William Moffat married a Sarah Caster on the 5th of November 1838 in Spalding in Lincolnshire. William is recorded as a brickmaker, so we can speculate he and Sarah moved the 65 miles or so as the crow flies from Spalding to Hull, possibly because of his work. However, to confirm this possible match of whether William and Sarah are George's parents, we need to find the marriage certificate for George and Margaret. According to the 1861 census, Margaret was born in Carlisle. 
and it's more likely that George married Margaret in Carlisle, as men were more likely to move long distances than women for reasons of employment, which suggests that at some point this George Moffat, as well as Thomas McMurray, had travelled the 130 or so miles, again as the crow flies, from Hull to Carlisle. Given the ages of George and Margaret in the census, the 1861 census, 19 and 18, we can speculate that George and Margaret were married relatively recently, but no earlier than 1859, and 16 was the youngest age a person could be married, and even then only with the permission of their parents. Searching the birth, marriages and death records between 1859 and 1861, brings to light a marriage of a George Moffat and a Margaret Armstrong in Carlisle. The marriage certificate reveals that they were married on the 11th of November 1860 in St Mary's Church, Carlisle, with Margaret recorded as a minor, that is under 21, and records George as an adult, that is 21 years or older, which may or may not be true given that he is 19 in the 1861 census. Although George from Yorkshire would have been 21 years old. And in this case, George is also a dyer, the same as in the census. However, it also records that his father was John Moffat, a courier. Someone who works with leather. So maybe this is not the George Moffat from Hull after all. You see, family tree research can often leave you confused, to put it mildly. We can also see that George and Margaret were living relatively close to each other when they got married. John Street is at the top of Shadden Gate, which converges with Milburn Street at Bridge Street. See the map. The marriage certificate also tells us that Margaret's father was a Hugh Armstrong, but doesn't give an occupation. But we're going to return to this sometime later. In the meantime, we can redraw the family tree. Of course, we now have yet more questions without really answering the two questions we posed at the end of the last video. We now can ask, why is John recorded as James's father on the marriage certificate when he's recorded as George on the birth certificate? And who is John Moffat the courier? Who indeed is George Moffat? Where was he born? In the next video, we're going to look at the family of George and Margaret Moffat to see if we can shed any light on this dilemma.